This right here was one of the best upgrades I made to my bike going to a one by setup. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the benefits of going to a one by the weight savings it can allow. Uh, also, more and more pros are going to a one by as well, and also making your drivetrain more efficient by running it with a better and straighter uh, chain line. We're gonna talk about this product, which is today's uh, product that I have here by Allo Gear, and uh, definitely a lot more of configurations that they have set up because when I was looking for the setup, not a lot of people make a 12 speed one by chain ring for the new Shimano, but uh, I ran across this company, which they do. We'll talk about all the configurations and also we're going to remove it, compare it to the stock weight as well, and hopefully you guys enjoy. So before we start removing this and talking about this product, why did I go one by? Well, as you guys know, I'm a big advocate of it because of the fact of where I live at, South Florida. When we do about a 35 mile ride or about a 42 kilometer ride, we only gain about 200 feet of elevation. So there really is no need for a front derailleur or a double chain ring like I have here. I feel like it's just a waste. Uh, there's more chances for chain drop and it's also heavier. But with a one by chain ring that I can actually get that I feel with, it, with a confident configuration of gearing, I have on here a 52 tooth chain ring up front paired with a Shimano 12 speed, 12 speed <laughs> cassette in the rear. This is a 1134 in the back. So I have a ton of gearing a lot of which I don't need. A bunch of these gears back here are redundant. I don't go into there, but there's a ton of configurations of what I have used. Um, now you guys might be saying to yourself, GC, what if I live in the hills or the mountains, okay? I need some gearing. I need some, uh, some, some two buy in my life. Well, a lot of pros nowadays are actually going over to this one by setup. Now you guys might also say to yourselves, you're not pros. Well, I got an answer for that too. Just get better at cycling. Editor, why don't we throw up a picture of the bike I'm talking about right here. Per example, one. Now, this is some high quality editing right here. Thank you, editor. But uh, seriously, right here in the background, this is the uh, reigning Tour de France champion, Jonas Vingegaard's uh, Cervelo S5 that he has on here. And now he's rocking because now they are pretty much sponsored on Team Yumbo Visma SRAM group sets. And they've been running SRAM groups with a one by setup on here. You have a one by chain ring in the front with a 1036 chain ring in the back and a 50 tooth in the front. And they're using this for a climbing stage with some nice uh, shallow depth wheels. We've also seen Woot Van Art running a, a one by setup as well. That seems to be their, their group set of choice when running a, a up and down kind of hill terrain. Now granted, they have the legs for it. They're pro athletes, they train for this. But again, you too at home can figure out what kind of gearing you need for where you're living at. Because let's be honest, we're not going at these different courses or these different elevations and riding a whole country. We're usually in our backyard, we're riding down the street or we know the roads we're always riding. So we can find out what gear works for us the best, like a 50 tooth, a 52 tooth, or maybe even a 48 tooth, and run a 1033, a 1036. I have here 1134 with a 52 tooth on here, uh, and kind of figure out that configuration because of the fact of, like I said, you get a better chain line, you get better shifts, and also you get less friction and less resistance in that as well. Uh, we have less to worry about with chains dropping. We have less to worry about with maintenance-wise in terms of a front derailleur with chain room. It just all in all, I think it looks way sexier, it looks uh, better, and it functions much easier. There's less to go wrong on your bike. So like I mentioned before, this is the uh, 52 tooth in the front and then a 1134 cassette in the rear. But in all seriousness, with the amount of speeds that we have in these rear derailers now, like this is a 12 speed setup, uh, I could see it. it's always it's always been hinted at, or not hinted at, but it's always been kind of talked about and rumored, and uh, especially with the classified rear hubs with the gearing in the back, and can't be already having a 13 speed group set. There's always these kind of talks about maybe having a 13 speed group set in the back for a ro road bike and then literally getting rid of the front derailleur altogether and just running one by chain ring configurations. It is, I think, a better end user for a better end experience for the end user uh, experience uh, because of the fact that there's less maintenance on that. I can tell you how many times people have hit their front derailleurs by accident have had chain drop with a SRAM red axis or force front derailleur um, and just have had malfunctioning front derailleurs like here in South Florida because of the lack of usage of the front derailleur. They keep it in their big chain ring. Sometimes corrosion can build up on there. And then these little pivot points on these springs back here, what can happen is they can freeze up. And then when they do go to use a front derailleur, it doesn't work anyway. So um, nothing wrong with a two by group set, but I think that the bicycle can still be made a little more efficient in the long run. And another reason why I went one by is because of the fact that I didn't need it. But two, uh, the 105 stuff only came with a 50 tooth uh, crank or 50 tooth chain ring in the big. 
And like I mentioned before, in South Florida, I want a little bit bigger, like a 52. Um, something that I can push a little bit better for gearing in here so that way we have a better efficient for the rear gears and the cassette. And also weight. Um, the 105 stuff is the heaviest of the group sets out of the Altega and the Durace. And if I can shave some dead weight off my bike by using taking away stuff I don't need, and I can sell this stuff later on down the road, why not do it? So we're going to get the weight of what these are right here. I have the chain bolts installed and also this front derailleur. I could also do a wire because of the fact that we didn't do a wire or I don't have the wire anymore, but take it to a tripod. If for any reason I ever wanted to go ahead and reconnect my front derailleur here, I basically just plugged the DI2 wire inside of here. You guys can actually see it. It's still sitting right there. So right now my shifter still has it plugged in. And if I ever want to go back to a one by setup, I just basically put my front derailleur back on, put my chain back on and we're good to go if I ever need to do so. But let's go ahead and weigh this real quick. So front derailleur with the bolt on here for a brazon. on. Yeah, 137 grams. Holy cow. I swear I would get dropped if I had that on my bike. <laughs> uh, chain rings on here, a 5034 with the chain ring bolts. Yeah, what's this? 204 grams, okay. And just for video's sake, I do have the exact same DI2 wire that's stuck inside my bike, a 850 millimeter length wire because we're being weight weenies here. Seven grams, okay? So let's total that up. Okay, so that is a total of, go ahead, editor, put the number right up here so everyone can see. That is a total of 348 grams of, of what this total takeoff is of my bike. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do here, thank you, editor, damn. Thank you, editor, for doing that. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're going to remove this chain off my bike and weigh it to the scale and then subtract that to find out the total amount of weight. Right now, 341 grams or 347 grams is about pretty much three-fourths of a pound. Again, nowhere near of anything to be gawk at, but I mean, to save three-fourths of a pound, if we're talking a relative and if we're talking like, you know, significance, people do pay thousands of dollars to remove that kind of weight off their bike. So we're getting here with just an upgrade of a chain ring and I think a more efficient drivetrain as well. So let's go ahead and remove this off the bike. All right, so here it is off the bike. We're gonna go ahead and remove these chain ring bolts to go ahead and get a weight of it. Now, a little bit about the product. This is by a company called Allo Gear. And again, like I said, I was looking for a company to go ahead and work with a compatible 12-speed Shimano drivetrain. I checked out Wolf Tooth. I checked out, um, I think, uh, um, 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 editor, take that part out. Three, two, one, go. And I also checked out uh, Rotor as well. But none of them really had a chain ring that worked for 12 speed that they said significantly worked for it. And when I did, I think Race Face, I'm sorry, Rotor said it, they did, but they only had the biggest option as a 50 tooth chain ring on there. And again, like I said, I want a little bit more oomph. I want a 52 tooth because that's what I'm used to. So they had it. Uh, so I got in contact with this company. They were very kind enough to send me out this chain ring. And I've been very, very happy with it ever since. I have about maybe 300 miles on it, nothing crazy. Um, but I'm really enjoying it and it's been working really well. It says it works with a 12 speed Shimano chain, 12 speed SRAM flat top chain. I'm running an XX1 mountain bike chain on here for the copper look of it. It says it also works with a Campy chain. They come in chain ring teeth all the way from 38 tooth, uh, all the way up to a 62 tooth if you want to as well, which is crazy. And they come in different offsets for that as well. Um, but it's mind blowing. They also make these little things because you can see on the Shimano stuff, they have these little gaps or lips here. They also sell a kit that you can actually put on here to make it look like completely flush. And it looks very, very cool. Come in different colors and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and have the editor put up a picture right now of what this looks like on a bike with that little kit. Editor, put a picture up. Great editing work here, guys. No, but you can see here, see that kind of has a little like fixture around it to fit against the Shimano crank. They have the option. I thought it looked a little bit cheesy, but you do have the option as well. And like I mentioned before, they do come in a bunch of different colors. Say like that as well. They also come in a bunch of different colors, which the editor will pop up right about now. Uh, from wherever your heart desires, again, the colors, they, they offer me a different color if I wanted to, but I just thought the black looked the best. But you have like purple, gold, green. So if you're looking for a color specific chain ring on here, they have every single color on here for about $104. So not bad. And this is what it looks like taken off. They did send me out just this. You will have to put on your own chain ring bolts because the chain ring bolts that come with Shimano do not work with this. You'll just need to buy like a pack of single speed 
chain ring bolts that uh, I think the website sells. They sell them themselves. Uh, or you can just go to any bike store. Like these ones are just like s work bolts for like a one by crank, whatever. Um, and they work pretty well. So let's go ahead and weigh this thing real quick. And then we can get the actual weight difference. So this is a 52 tooth compared to a 5034. I'm gonna do some digging right here. And I think this is a, okay. So this is 130 grams. Let's go ahead and minus that. So the total weight savings is, I'm gonna have the editor put the weight right here, guys. Um, from difference of a two by setup with a front derailleur to a one by uh, chain ring. And again, this is a 52 tooth compared to the 50 to them there. We have a total of, editor put that out there please in the corner. Um, 218 grams, which is still a half a pound. I mean, again, you pay, whoops. <laughs> well, that's a good job, editor. You pay good money, you pay good money to get a, a half a pound off your bike just by going to, I believe, in my case as well, a more efficient uh, drivetrain setup as well. And it's a gearing that works for you. Like I said, it doesn't need to be a 52 tooth. Let's say you know that you're not in your 11 tooth or you know that you're not in your 10 tooth or your cassette all the time. You can go ahead and figure out what chambering size works best for you or maybe consult with your bike shop or check forms and maybe go to a one by set because again, I just think that it just works best for consumers where I'm at. Uh, it's not always will be the best situation, but I'm seeing more and more people, even the pros now running a one by setup in this matter. So if you ever have constant issues with your front derailleur dropping or just having something you can't really take care of, um, this is a great solution, I believe, to go for. Just put it back on like that, and I'm gonna go ahead and tie this thing back up. Now that our chain ring bolts are all much more snugged up, we can go ahead and throw it back on the bike. Uh, quick thing for you guys as well. If you guys are having creaky noise and you guys can't figure out where it's coming from, like a ticking noise, sometimes check your chain ring bolts on your crank. Uh, a lot of times I fixed that on a bike and that has taken away a ticking noise and people are surprised they were loose. Uh, I'm going to do a video later on down the road too with a, with a, a creaking noise bike. I'm going to show you guys, walk you guys through the steps I usually go through to figure out what's ticking on a bike. So that way you guys can, everyone's like, it's the bottom bracket. It's the bottom bracket. It's the bottom bracket. But majority of times, because this bike is carbon fiber, this thing echoes. So it could be anywhere from your wheels to your da da da. I'll go through a whole video, but we'll put this in. So we'll put this back in here like this. And again, I mean, this, like I said, I think it's a more efficient situation because of where I'm at. I'm, I'm definitely starting to see more and more pros. Okay, not more and more pros, but I mean, it's crazy that the reigning Tour de France champion is using it. It's crazy that Woot Van Aert's using it. Now, this is, again, the reason why, if you guys didn't know, okay, okay, okay. The reason why, if you didn't know, why they prefer to run a one by setup over a two by setup in the Tour for SRAM Red is because of the, the knowing issues of a SRAM Red front derailleur and that classic old fucking SRAM where the guy drops his chain on there. So they don't want to have the, the, the chances of a mechanical on the bike to go ahead and fail them. And they want to, they basically want to say, hey, if we're gonna lose the race, it's because of the fact they didn't train hard enough or they got outworked that day. They don't want to leave it up to the bike to go ahead and ruin that for them. So they're picking a gear and they feel comfortable with. A 50 tooth in the front at 1036. I mean, if that's working for the pros in there, and the pro peloton, those speeds, then that's working for those guys up there, which is great. Um, with this one by chain ring, these teeth are much more larger. They grab the chain better as well. And you don't have those kind of issues worry about a um, chain ring dropping off on there. Oh. Let me give you guys a little free abai sound test and we'll wrap it up with a conclusion of why we did this video, okay? Son, where did you find this?
All right, so there you have it. That is the full video on this one by setup. Again, if you guys are interested in this chain right here, it's from Alu Gear. I will put a link to their store down below. I don't have a discount code. I don't have anything about them. I just think they make a really good product. They make chain rings, I think, for mountain bikes, for uh, 12 speed Shimano, SRAM as well. They make chain rings for everything. So if you guys are looking for a color coded chain ring out there, and maybe you guys want to help with a 12 speed one by setup that's compatible, you guys can know now that this works with it really well. So. If I can help you guys in that matter and maybe take a little bit of the edge off someone for you, then there you go. But again, like I said, this this will, I don't know if this will ever replace two by in as a whole, like like towards the whole in industry, but I definitely think one by is more efficient in terms of a better chain line. You have less to worry about with a mechanical with a dropping chain or even throwing the chain off the bike. You don't have to worry about a front derailleur failing on you or chain rub or uh, just hearing a noisy front derailleur either. You're seeing more and more people go to a one by setup, like I mentioned before. You have the Yumbo Visma team. You have even Vegan Cyclist is a huge advocate on it on his channel. He's running a 50 tooth in the front and a 10 52 in the rear with a SRAM mountain bike rear derailleur on there. I've done a, a build like that as well. Um, let me know what you guys think. Will you do you guys ever think that the industry will go to a 13 speed rear derailleur cassette and a one by seven in the front? I really do enjoy it. I think it makes the bike look much sexier and cleaner. And also there's less maintenance and less to worry about. How many times have you guys been at your garage messing around with limit screws, messing around with cable tensions, messing around with all that stuff and still hearing a derailleur rub? Uh, it's never a fun time. And I will have a full review of this Elves. I'm still putting some more miles on it. I'm actually really enjoying this bike. Um, already had an issue though. I cracked my stem here on the, right there, you can see that. I was playing on this thing and kind of cracked it, so. Uh, it's very soft, but the bike itself has been handling phenomenally. It is a great bike for South Florida, super aero. It is a little bit vertically stiff, but we'll get more into that video down below. So thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you guys next video.